So the next one is interesting. The subject line is my brother gave me chlamydia. So <laughs> I'm sorry, what? It happens. No, it doesn't. It doesn't happen. It just doesn't. Okay. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. It doesn't happen. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 161. You can't be smacking peanut M&Ms into the mic like that. That's, what do you want me to do? You want me to smack some of them? I would like you to swallow the peanut M&Ms. You said nuts and swallow. <laughs> and of someone who has a fifth grade humor, <laughs> it's very tough for me not to be like, ha, ha. Uh, ha, ha. you know what I mean? Nuts and swallow. See? Yeah. It's very tough. It's very tough. It's, it's very low hanging fruit. Oh shit! I you know what I mean. And that's a balls like that. All it's all coming together. Why? Are, why? And then I said, I said, ha. it's all coming together. Why are there so many terms for uh, that area of the body and that act? Let's hit some intro music. Okay, so that way I can eat an M M&M. and M. Making out and making new friends. Hello. Hey guys, it's, no, what? Don't talk to them. They don't know you. Well, I'm just I'm letting them know uh, the situation. It is 1:47 in the morning right now because mm. Zach just got home from. You said maybe the New best York concert. City, July oh, 27th, right. this Thursday. You can see us in the Big Apple. A lot of people are saying you guys won't be there, and so that will say you. We are going to be there. This this episode will actually come out the day of our live show, or no, the day we get to New York. Sorry. Yes, and uh, again, if you're not there and you live near the area and you have an opportunity, I, your firstborn child, I'll put a cigarette out on their soft spot. And I'll oh, press really man, hard. So no. what? Okay, that's too far. Or maybe it's not far enough. No, you can't you can't be threatening children. Why? Like people's parents and grandparents, that's fine, right? They've lived enough life. Children are just pre parents and grandparents. Yeah, but they haven't lived enough life for you to threaten them yet. They're like a free trial of a human. I don't think there's anything free about a child. Um, how do you feel about post birth abortion? Post-birth abortion. Um, let's break that down. So murder. Some people call it homicide. That's what Alyssa calls it. Alyssa calls it uh, every Tuesday. Whoa, what'd you just eat, champ? Oh. We got a, we got Handsome back from... Um, he was recent. Okay, Handsome is my dog, if you guys don't know. He was at boarding school and either learned nothing or learned everything and is not letting us know. He had a piece of a broke of the broken marble on uh, here. And now he's immediately under the couch. <laughs> he learned nothing. He learned absolutely nothing, but we're happy. Least, he's back. We're happy. He's back. I'm dude. I'm so excited. It's like when you send your back. uncle to rehab and they come <laughs> back and then you just, they're like, all right, I'm just going to go to my room and you're like, okay. And you're not going to do any alcohol. Right. And you're like, no, not me. I would never because I went to rehab and then you hear the door close and you hear cheer. <laughs> and we're like, oh, he's drinking. Oh. He's consuming alcohol. If you had to go to rehab for something, like what would it be? That's kind of interesting. Say they had a rehab for every single thing in the entire world. What oh. would you go to rehab for? Uh, easily sugar addiction. Oh. Oh, my God. It is so bad. It's my God, too. Mm. Oh, our God. Oh, our God. Who art in where? Heaven. Everywhere. Oh. He's in all of us, isn't he? That's beautiful. You're beautiful. So when did the sugar addiction start? I've got a sugar addiction as well. You do? No, <laughs> but I wanted to relate to you. That's what they do in rehab. I, how do you know? From experience or? I watch a lot of documentaries. Actually, speaking of rehab, the do you remember that like that show, Celebrity Rehab? Uh, no. What, it, what was it? Well, it was basically just like a reality show, but it was a rehab center that celebrities would go to, and they would just like film the process or whatever but that like rehab facility estate whatever just went up on sale uh to purchase and guess how much it is the low price of 20 million dollars oh so did you put it in a bid yeah i i put down i, I put down 15 percent as like the down payment um because i i really just couldn't cough up four million i feel like being well known and famous you know adds to the substance abuse and Maybe they also need a rehab from, you know, being in the limelight, but then it's like, and getting attention. And then it's like, they're, they're getting a fix of their attention because it's being filmed. So really, did they even go to rehab? 
No, they probably didn't. I don't think I don't think they learned anything. Handsome looks drunk. Dude, he's so tired. He's so sleepy. He slept in my bed last night. He does not get comfortable easily. He'll flip and flop for about an hour. <laughs> and then he comes up to you and he takes his paw and he presses it as hard as he can to your eye <laughs> <laughs> until you acknowledge him. And then you lift up the covers and he goes under and he'll sleep in a position that's n- not comfortable for your legs, but you can't move. Is it like, because is, he's cute. Is it the, uh, the position where he like burrows himself like right in your there's, pelvic region? There's a lot of things. Well, Jared, come on. Bestiality is not. A part no, of this that wasn't. Obviously it wasn't a bestiality thing. Okay. It's just, he likes to be cuddled up. Um, he's not neutered as well. I want to put that out there. I really like comments where people are like, like to question how you're parenting or, oh, or how yeah, you're doing yeah. anything in life. Uh huh. So I just want to say he's not neutered. And I just kind of want to see what the comments are. Like, yeah. you're the devil for not neutering him. <laughs> Why would you do that? They cut off his balls right now or else he'll spawn into Satan. Do you have any idea how to raise a child? Uh, for our so audio sad. listeners, he's an English bulldog who really resembles a founding father. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like someone put him a little too close to the sun and he melted. He melted, but also got a little crispy, you know, but then they like freeze dried him immediately. So it didn't completely droop down. And now he just, (laughs) he looks like somebody's grandpa. He looks racist. He does. And, but he's not in a terminology that you like to say, he looks like he has opinions and he's not afraid to say that. Like he, he looks like he wears white cloaks on Tuesdays, but he does not. (laughs) He just looks old. Trying to stay awake. He's actually tri blend. How many? What? He's got one, two, three. He's got four colors on him. Can't be racist when you're four colored. I'm surprised he could even get those white cloaks. If you had to be a different race, what would you be? This is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would I be? Even phrasing it as if you had to be feels like I could get oh, canceled. Yeah. I don't know why. I didn't. I, why, why'd you phrase it? If like you that? are blessed to become <laughs> not white, now that's oh oh I that's the cutest up. thing I've ever seen. Oh my goodness! Yeah, no, no, it's a really simple question. If you were to become another race, why would you pick that race above all the other ones? It's not like is it, this isn't a superiority question. I'm just looking for just which one. Okay, God, this is going to sound so stereotypical. I would want to be black. Okay, okay, and not like I don't want to be like that stereotypical like white guy that just wants to be black or whatever. It's just like. Growing up and like having friends and being in like black culture club. Loves was, to bring that up. No, it was just like, it was such a tight knit community. <laughs> and, and somebody, I actually just saw a TikTok about this. It was this girl. It was a, I think it was a white girl that posted it, but she was like with her friends and she, uh, she filmed like a video of her friends dancing in slow motion and mm. it had like a really pretty song over it. And they said, there's nothing more pure than black joy. And, um, and it was just like a, a group of guys just dancing, goofing off and having so much fun. And it was, it was a really sweet video and it just looked like such a good time. Stereotypically, you were saying that black people have more fun and that's why you want to be a part of their culture. I just think they have like a very like beautiful and fun and they, uplifting even saying culture. they there fiend. No, it's just, it's okay. It's not a big deal. God, this is such a, t- like, anyway, yes. What would you be? White. <laughs> oh, God. oh man. Someone's not going to get that. Okay. They're, they're we got to, should we break down satire? Can you look up the definition of satire, please? Thank you so much. So some, uh, some people don't know what it is. <laughs> and we've got to teach them. Actually, Tom, we need to, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say Tom Segura has a really funny bit in one of his earlier specials where he was talking about his father and his father, older white man, you know, and he, uh, he goes to confide something in Tom and he's like, he's like, Tom, I got to tell you, he's like, there is nothing I love more than watching black people have fun. (laughs) I've had a similar experience talking with someone. It was actually a family member of mine. I won't out on which one, but I'm going to pop one of these, uh, nutty, nutty chocolates in my mouth. Oh, some people like ASMR. Some um, people hate it viscerally well, and they're going to leave a comment. We're a divided nation anyway. <laughs> Might as well stick the fork. Uh, 
You want to tell us what satire is before I move on? Satire is the use of humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose and criticize people's stupidity or vices, particularly in the context of contemporary politics and other topical issues. Hell yeah, brother. That's perfect. Okay. But no, one of my family members, they said, um, God, the way that black people move their shoulders just really gets me going. (laughs) I had to walk out of the room. (laughs) I had to walk out of the room because I knew it came from a good place. Yeah. But man, you can't say that. But yeah. You can't say that. Wait. Maybe in 04. Hold on. I'm going to bleep it out, but can you tell me who it was? <laughs> <laughs> the math is there, right? Oh, it's so there. And that's how you know it's not from a bad place. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That is from the most wholesome, genuine place. It's just, yeah, it's just the phrasing of it, you know. We, we're starting off dicey. <laughs> nah, we're, you know, being inclusive. I feel like to be inclusive, everyone should receive the same treatment. So it's like, if you're going to joke about someone, if you joke about everyone, I feel like that's the most inclusive thing you can do. Because I think, um, God, I, I'm realizing now I watch a lot of stand-up comedy because somebody had a joke. They started off and it was it was going to be, I, I forget what race the joke was about. And then he's like, oh, I can tell. I lost some of you in the audience. So to make you, he was a white guy. He's like, so to make you feel more comfortable, here's a white people joke. And then said it something about like how we don't season our food. And then he went in too. We should do white people stuff. Uh, can you look up white people jokes? This is going to be good. Do you have any off the top of your head? Uh, I mean the classic, like we don't season our foods, you know, or pepper, like ground black pepper is like too spicy. We'll see if Alyssa has better ones. <laughs> Deliver it like your stand-up comedian, please, or you're fired. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, white people will be like, <laughs> 40 degrees Fahrenheit is the weather. Wait, fuck. Is the, wait, 40 degrees Fahrenheit is the perfect weather to wear basketball shorts and flip flops. Okay. Okay. You kind of stuttered on the delivery. Yeah, but, sorry. It um, was, I, the F was there and I didn't understand what it meant, but it was Fahrenheit. All right. Run it through one more time like you're not having a seizure. Okay. White people be like, 40 degrees Fahrenheit is the perfect weather to wear basketball shorts and flip flops. T- when I was younger, I was I was the kid who wore shorts year round. Like it'd be freezing outside. And for whatever reason, I got, it made me feel like a warrior. People would be like, aren't you cold? And it's the best to go. Nope. No, but were you freezing? Like I'd be cold down? at times. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, I couldn't feel my legs. Oh, but- your your left leg just fell off because of hypothermia. <laughs> but I look sick. <laughs> but I'm mobile. I used to tell my mom, I like I was never the kid to wear shorts year round, but I up until seventh grade, I just didn't care what I wore, you know, like matching wise. Up until when? Seventh grade. What? What grade are you in now? Are you in seventh grade? <laughs> I feel like this kind of goes together. You're right. Okay, maybe the flip flops kind of throw it off, but or the the slippers. You look good. This is my new shirt. Okay, what is it? Run us through it. Okay, we're gonna get back to we're we're gonna get we're, to we're, more we're, white trust people me, jokes. We're so gonna get back to white people on. jokes. Okay, so in celebration of uh, Barbie and Oppenheimer coming out, um, <laughs> you know the the Barbenheimer event of the century. Uh, I bought this shirt from this, this girl, uh, she, her account is snazzy seagull and she makes like a bunch of meme shirts. Mm. It is Oppenheimer's famous quote after he created, or he witnessed the first explosion of the atom bomb. Nice. And Spoiler it says, alert. it says now I've become death destroyer of worlds, but it's in the Barbie font. Um, and so it adds like a little, uh, What's the word? Brevity? Are you going to wear that when you go to the double feature? Hell yes. Do you, are you expecting compliments? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it is. Now that I have the context behind it, I, I do I do find it humorous. Actually, I, I, I enjoy that. Thank you. Um, wow. I just got a genuine compliment from Zach. Well, you didn't create the shirt. All right. Uh, Alyssa. Yes. White people jokes. Okay. White people be like, I'm not just white. I'm 22% Irish, 18% German, 28% Italian, 30% French, and 2% milk. <laughs> Did you like the milk part? <laughs> yeah, that one. You didn't expect it. No, no, no. Originally, you're like, wait, I'm relating to this joke because 
I say I'm all these things. And then to yeah, throw I, you, that's what I thought the humor was going to be. Exactly. And then it throws you for a loop at the end that a punch to the gut that you don't expect. That was so good. Props to whoever wrote that joke. Yes, props. White people be like, Taco Bell is too spicy. I feel a little called out for this one. <laughs> you do. Your bowels do seem to not handle spice in a way. I love spice, but spice does not love me. What else doesn't love you? Okay. Um, God damn. Dude. Or okay. Why are we doing? Or Why are we going down this road? Well, I hate this. I love this road. No, of course you do. Eventually. No, that's making me sad. As it should. No, stop. She just left, by the way. Wearing Jared's clothes. She wasn't wearing my clothes. Then whose guy's clothes were those? Those were hers. Ah. Ah. It's good for you. <laughs> White people. <laughs> yeah, my eyes are so cool. They're like sapphire blue, but then changed to a rainforest green in the light. And sometimes they turn gray when I wear my favorite sweater. Also, they look indigo when I'm at Olive Garden. That one didn't hit. Okay. That one. I was boo. That one made me flaccid. Were you not before that? Every time I do the podcast, I like to get a little chubbed up, a little fluffer. Yeah, a little fluffed up. Who's your fluffer? A memory of Margot Robbie. Can you believe that there is a trend uh, of people saying that Margot Robbie is mid? Um, can I believe it? Yes. Do I believe it? No. Uh, do I hate the word mid? It's like cap when people are like, yeah, no cap. <laughs> and you see that tweet and it's like people that say no cap. Yeah, no gown too. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> for the people in the back, no cap and gown is it's because you uh, didn't, didn't graduate, graduate because you weren't educated enough. I, I like I, I I'll throw myself under the bus here. I remember saying no cap one time, I think to you. And the moment like I said it, I don't know why I said it genuinely. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't even um, as a joke and it just felt so wrong coming out and you you let me know your true feelings on how you felt. I, I think the appropriate time to use no cap is also like right now, it's a great time to use lit because, because it's kind it's, of phased out a little and bit. It's, and it's kind of funny oh, that okay, you're yeah, using yeah. lit now. Yeah. Like you're just jumping on the lit train. In like 10 years, you start capping it up. People are going to be like, yeah, and now that is nostalgic. It's beautiful. New York City, July 27th. Hope to see you there. Oh, wait. Holy hell. Uh, dude, how far are we in this podcast? 22. And we haven't promoted a Patreon yet. Uh, Patreon, we're about to film a drunk episode tomorrow um, where we consume a little bit too much alcohol and we say things we regret, but we put it on the internet anyway. Here's an example from uh, one of the past episodes. Yeah. Did you see that video? I don't know if it was Jubilee or- Oh, oh uh, the guys rating dick sizes? Yeah. Yes. That's insane. They positioned themselves in order of who they think has the biggest penis to the smallest penis. What right. was the biggest? Uh, eight, eight inches. inches. Uh, 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 I've taken like 14. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think of what eight inches is. Eight what? inches is fucking uh, it's huge. huge. Uh, where's the tape measure? I think that's only. You think, you think that's, that's eight, eight inches? inches? Wait, no. You're going to be Are pretty disappointed if I ever get pants at a local pool. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's eight that's inches? That's eight inches. Imagine taking that. You're feeling that shit in your gut. <laughs> Don't don't look at it like I've seen this before. Be honest. What's the biggest you've seen? Seen or like <laughs> experienced? Describe experienced. It doesn't. Whatever. The biggest <laughs> you've encountered. Wow. Patreon. This is what <laughs> this is what y'all are paying for. So make sure to subscribe to the Patreon right now. And if you don't, you're actually missing out on a lot of good stuff. It's a really cool community over there. We've actually been genuinely having a good time. We've we've we're doing live podcasts as well, which have been fun. Live, uh, live Q and A's. You know what I mean, man. Come on, okay. kiss me. And we're also right now. You can't tell by the cameras set up now, but we're the the other half of our set is a wreck because we're setting up the game show that we're going to be throwing up on Patreon as I thought well. It was, I thought it was going to be on the main episode. Well, it can be, but we're also going to put Patreon exclusive episodes of the game show. I didn't know that up there. I'm better subscribe. And so exciting stuff. Uh, yeah. Come in, come. I don't know, dude. I suck at selling. No, you're good. Let's have a white person joke to really bring it back. Hey, you tried your best. Uh, yeah, and it wasn't good enough. You try to be enthusiastic. That's what people love, but you lost your train of thought, and that's okay. You got to stop being so hard on yourself. I think I'm hard on you enough for the both of us. So we were all chilling down here on the couch, uh, me, Alyssa, and, and, and are you going to keep that name in? No, I'm going to cut it out. But why? 
Because I don't know. Aren't you guys official? No. Um, oh. And so we were all we were all sitting on the couch and handsome, knocked out, snoring, you know, full nine yards. I wasn't there. And no, you weren't. You were still at the concert. Oh, you said handsome. Oh, shut up. <laughs> uh, and so he's snoring and I turned to I turned to her and I go, I'm like, is that what I sound like at night? And she goes, Oh yeah, but way worse. <laughs> and uh, Alyssa starts like laughing her ass off okay which i didn't need it's well, a shame that's one of her best assets <laughs> <laughs> uh, which i that was not uh, a moment of encouragement um and she goes yeah but you also do the thing where i think you're gonna die and i was like yeah i've heard that i was like what do you mean and she's like yeah you just sound like you're choking yeah and so then i learned in that moment that i most definitely have sleep apnea and oh, you're going to have to sleep with a sleep apnea mask. Yeah, I'm going to have to get a CPAP probably. Because um, it's, for the people that don't know what a CPAP is, can we put in like a little clip or something? Which my mom has one. Oh. And, you know, granted, she says that it like saved her marriage because uh, like April would have to get up and go to the couch a lot of a lot of nights because my mom's Isn't the snoring. CPAP or whatever you call it machine loud? Um, no, they make like fairly quiet ones now. But that was literally the movie we just watched. That oh yeah, girl was wearing it. Oh, yeah, she buddy. But <laughs> said that you're gonna my, have to plan sex. You know that, right? Like it's not just gonna happen spur of the moment with this mask on. Because once you turn into sleepless Bane, <laughs> <laughs> no one cares who I was before the mask. Is that good, Bane? Ah, uh, you've done better. Have I? When? How, long, how often have I done Bane? You've done Bane quite a bit. You do Bane, and you do. I'm more of an airline pilot guy. Hello, everyone. If you look out to your right, you'll see uh, Alyssa absolutely twerking around. I've got to stop sexually harassing Alyssa. I've yeah, realized. you definitely do. But she said that okay. when I <laughs> when I have my little breathe right strips on, that yeah, it doesn't happen. So maybe that's kind of like I can save it by getting the uh, deviated septum surgery. Um, but yeah, she was like, yeah, I think you're gonna die. <laughs> she has a great sense of humor, and she's like. <laughs> She was like, which honestly, if you do, I get a great night's sleep. <laughs> that is true. I like that she looks at the positive in life. Oh, yeah. That's one thing I like about her, too. Have you written down how to, like, do all the cameras and stuff? Can you no. just, like, okay, do a checklist? Mm-mm. Why? I'm not going to have you replace me. If you die? Yeah. You, okay, so. Show's over. So we're just out of income. We uh-huh. have to go live on the streets. A hundred percent. Alyssa and I are going through trauma. One thing leads to another. We're married, obviously, because we're yeah. bonding. Yeah, trauma and bonding. It's a real thing. We have a kid. That kid grows up with a mother who doesn't treat him correctly just because she's so distraught about losing her friend. She takes out the anger on the kid. She beats the hell out of him because she wants him to be a singer. And then she's essentially created the next Michael Jackson. Yeah, so it sounds like I gave the world um, the next king of pop by dying and not uh, showing you how to use the camera equipment. It sounds like I also helped in that. You did part. nothing. Okay. You yeah, were, did a lot all you did was beat a child physically and emotionally abusive. All right. Don't, don't try to take credit for this. I was loving to my child. But the good news is I for whatever helped. reason, that's my kink. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> we had the conversation the other day. Um, you said, well, I asked Alyssa where are off, you going with this? off the clock. Okay. I, I said, don't know if that makes it any better. No, go trust ahead. me. That'll hold up in court. You said, if you don't sleep with Jared, you never get to see him again. Would you take that bet? So if you, and then you said, I'm sorry, Jared, I would have to sleep with you. Yeah, because I don't want to never see him again. Yeah, that would be sad. God, what is going to think? But I, Man, there's going to be a lot of beliefs in this episode. I don't think episode. that would happen. It's just well, a hypothetical. Well, yeah, that's, that's a crazy so, ass hypothetical. I don't think. Granted, if that really did come down to it, I, I mean, if you wanted to just bounce, I guess like, there was nothing I bounce could do what? about it. Like leave. <laughs> oh, I thought, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, you, no, you walked sorry. into yeah, that I, one. I did. I have another joke. Oh, you Is have it about white one? people, please? Yes. Yes. Okay. White people love saying, well, someone's not happy when they hear a child crying somewhere. <laughs> Damn. I, this is crazy. I'm feeling so called out. It feels like she wrote or she found all these jokes about me. It's tough, huh? When you find out that you're a stere- stereotypical white person, mm-hmm. do you fall under any of these categories? Oh, yeah. Yeah? 
I love macaroni and cheese. Okay. I like country music. You just went to Morgan Wallen's concert. How was that? Good. <laughs> okay, why do you do this? This is so what? frustrating. You go to something that you could like definitely talk about and expand on, and all you do okay, is go. Sorry. All right, okay, good. Okay, Ask me you again. were so- Ask me again, and I will. I will expand on it. Okay, you just went to the Morgan Wallen concert. How was that? Really good. I'm gonna punch you in the face. Has violence ever been the answer in your life? Never. Sometimes. Mm. What? What was? <laughs> I like when you get nervous. What was? <laughs> your favorite song that he performed not like your favorite one of his in general but the the one that was like the best showmanship maybe sand in my boots he, he did really well with that one really was it more can we write a country song right now probably give me a country word i mean truck is pretty stereotypical yeah let's try it let's go let's dig a little deeper dig deeper okay well, truck okay we'll use it we're gonna you know how people always do the rap videos we're gonna do that with country so truck. So now we're planning a music video. No, no, no. You're going to give me two more words and I'm going to create oh, a, you're gonna do a like southern a ballad. Alyssa gets to pick a word too, so I don't take both of them. Campfire. Campfire. Okay. Sweet tea. Okay. Oh, there we go. I was sitting by the campfire next to my sweet tea. Oh. Her name's Taylor and she's really sweet to me. Back of my tailgate, we lay down to rest. I looked up at the stars and I said, what'd you say? I didn't say anything. Lightning struck us at that moment. We both died. We were buried together Well, in a coffin too small for us. We looked like sardines in that coffin. People made comments at the funeral. Is, how would you know they made comments? I was alive. I didn't die. I was paralyzed. She was very much dead and stinky. <laughs> but I was alive. But wouldn't they be able to feel your heartbeat? No. Why? Because they didn't check my heartbeat. Why would they not check your heartbeat? Because I looked like this. <laughs> I was very much looked dead, but I was electrocuted. My mom was weeping. Is this still but part she of the song? She was pretty excited. She kept on mentioning life um, insurance, which I thought was like a little weird to bring up there. Like she brought it up to several people. Like how much do you think I'll get? Do you have life insurance? No. You don't? Yeah. What do I care? I'm mean, dead. You don't want to like take care of your loved ones after I won't have any loved ones. I'll have no capacity to love. I'll be dead. But like the people you cared about when you were alive, like your mother, I'll have no way to care. I am dead. I'm saying you can care now. I think part of life is struggle. I think that's if everything is you just don't on cruise think control. Your mom is going to struggle with your dad. Have you ever played GTA and you do the cheat codes and you have unlimited money. And it's not fun anymore. Yeah, I have actually. I exactly. Really do I want that game. life for my mom? No, I want her to struggle so she can prosper and go through it. She's going to struggle. You're dead. Her only son is I dead. was paralyzed. Okay, you're still, okay, you're I'm buried. I'm like this, in a coffin. <laughs> you're buried in the ground. With the love of my life, sweet tea. But you're still. Taylor. You're, she's still going to struggle because. Not she Taylor buried, Hudson. She, she buried. But maybe, what's up, baby? Text me. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> She buried you. Like, she still thinks you're dead. She didn't bury me. She's not great with shovels. Okay. The groundskeepers did that. All right. Either way, you're still in the ground. Yes. Okay. She's never going to see you again. Unless she digs me up. But you're right. She's but not good just, with a shovel. Yeah, you, she's not good with a shovel. So she's never going to see you again. What are we talking about? You're saying <laughs> that you wouldn't give your mom life insurance because you want her to struggle. And I am saying that you want to take care of your loved ones after they die and that your mom is still going to struggle because her son is dead. I'm going to take a hard left on this conversation. Yeah, if that's go okay. For it. Yeah, go for it. It wasn't going anywhere, right? No. Like this is not me putting you down. Unless, do you want to continue down this rabbit hole or are you trying to come up with content? No, not at all. Are you trying to come up with content? I was just riffing with you. Yeah, we were riffing just, to cool. get to get more. Are you using Squarespace? Ow. Are you using Squarespace? Ow. Give it an Ow. You just hit Ow. the flip. Ow. Thank you, Squarespace, for sponsoring this episode. Ah. Squarespace is a great place, the best place, actually, to make a website. They make it super easy with their numerous custom templates to create any site that you want. Say you have a blog where you talk about your ex-boyfriend because he was bad to you, like Jira's ex. Okay. You can do that easily with Squarespace. 
So you sell uh, any products. Their e-commerce is not only great, it's better than everyone else. In my humble, humble opinion. We sell merch. And what do we use to power it? Squarespace. So you need to too. Honestly, if you need a website for anything, you need to use Squarespace, right, Jared? Yeah. If you Say have you're a, a photographer. Yep, I was going to get into portfolios. Okay. You stepped on my line. Well, I thought you were addressing me. I just, I just fought an animal for this ad. The least you could do is talk about Squarespace. I use Squarespace for my music website. I have all of my releases up there. Uh, I have YouTube embedded links for all my music videos. And eventually I'll be able to put up, uh, you know, merch with the e-commerce tool. I'll be able to put up tour dates where you can like buy tickets and stuff. It's a fantastic website. It looks beautiful. And I couldn't have done any of it on my own without their wonderful award-winning templates. So if you want 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain, you can easily use the code dropouts. Just go to squarespace.com slash dropouts. That is squarespace.com slash D-R-O-P-O-U-T-S. That's dropouts for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. What a fantastic deal. You need a, you need a website anyway because everyone does it, so might as well save some money, huh? With the help of us and Squarespace. Thank you so much, Squarespace. Thank you. Look me in the eyes. How do you feel about money? I like it. How do you, I will break your nose if you talk over my ad read again. You understand? Yes, sir. Yes, dad. No, I'm not calling you that. Sorry, daddy. You're right. If you want to save money and get some money back, I think I think Rocket Money is the best way to go. I was actually using this product before they sponsored us. Essentially, here's one of the best features that I like. We have so many subscriptions now in 2023 in this subscription-filled world. It's ridiculous. We forget who we're sending money to. Well... Guess what? Rocket Money does it. Itemizes every subscription you have, even the ones you even forget about. And it says, hey, do you still want to pay for this? I don't even know if you're using it. Bing, bong, bomb. It's one of the few services where you actively will probably get more money back than you're paying for it. How much do you think you pay on for subscriptions a month? <sighs> if my mom listens to this, she's going to add thousands probably. You're probably spending thousands more than you realize with all the ones that you forgot about. I only about. need one subscription. And that's Rocket Money. Yeah. And um, I like Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving them an average of $720 a year. That's, That's insane. insane. That's in sync. Oh, I thought we were going to keep going. Oh, sorry. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash dropouts. That's rocketmoney.com slash D-R-O-P-O-U-T-S. Rocketmoney.com slash dropouts. Rocket, then money, then dot com, then drop. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank I you. I know. Thank you, Rocket Thank Money. Thank you, Dad, and Rocket Money, and Rocket Money. No, this is, um, this is what I'm going to talk about. This is a country song I've won the right for a while. I don't know anything about it except for the premises you know, he's finally made it. He's in all these new cities. He's away from home. He's very sad. But something in their lyrics, he's like, he's like, I don't have my, like, that restaurant I like. I don't have the my buddies around. But I got home in my right hand. Because, like, he married his high school sweetheart. And, like, she's holding his right hand. So he's Aww. like, he feels like he has home in his right hand. That's cute. Because when they're holding hands. What do you think what about that? He's I, holding her left hand. Uh, bury her <laughs> <laughs> just this is this is why we this keep is her why around. yeah what are we supposed to keep ruin creative visions you're fine i like no oh, i like you the just, song i like the lyric to be fair maybe oh, well, hold on going right going off uh i guess it like phonetically it doesn't sound uh as good but if you say like home in my left hand um, he could be talking about his wedding band. His band doesn't do weddings because he's on tour with them. <laughs> oh my God. What? His his wedding ring. Come on. That's crazy. All right, fine. You actually, you gave me a good idea for a song, uh, like premise kind of concept like that a while ago. Um, it was about, Whatever. it was about like the grass growing back from where she used to park her car, like in his front yard. That's not my song. That's a, uh, you literally you you. I think that's Sam Hunt. That's a Sam Hunt song. That's a uh, yeah. That he has that song. Yeah, oh, that's Sam Hunt. He's well, like maybe you. He's like the grass still hasn't grown back for you to park your car. 
Oh, maybe you were singing that then, and, and I you're thought, like, Zach's I thought, a genius. I thought you were just freestyling. Like, what, you, did you, you write down Thriller as well? <laughs> <laughs> this is Thriller. Hold on, let me. Thriller night. Yeah, I literally have like, I have in my notes Park in the Grass or something like that. Oh, okay, well, never mind. I'll go fuck myself. Um, you don't have to do that. I wrote a song that I really want to sell. Uh, to somebody or like work with somebody oh, to pitch it. record. I'll see if I want to buy it. I wrote it about, I was like, I was at like a kind of low point. Um, just like uh trick question. You've never been at a high point. Keep going. <laughs> just, uh, I was feeling really homesick and, um, I wrote a song about like the last conversation I had with my mom before I moved to LA. It's called right now. The, the title of the song is called young man, young man. I, I do think of that every time. Young man. Like I've heard she, these lyrics. Keep going, though. She said, um, I know you have to go, and I taught you all that I can. And she asked, when do you get so old, but you always be my young man? You know? Aww. I didn't get one yaw for my sweet tea song, but. And then, like, I have, uh, like, nostalgic. Uh, the, the verses are about, like, nostalgic memories that we have. And so it's like, uh, where are the days when you learn to crawl? Uh, taking markers and crayons to all of our walls, going to see Santa down at the mall. Oh, I still think about it all. How you'd only go out in your favorite boots, the way you, you'd you refuse to eat any green foods, our little talks on our drive to school. Oh, how I'll miss uh, how I'll miss you. That's solid. And so I really, I really want to work with someone. Like imagine um, Luke Combs, like someone with like that deep kind of Southern drawl singing that. Sir, I think you met your Luke Combs. Why do you? That's Elvis. <laughs> what, what the fuck was that? All right, give me give me a lyric to sing. Okay, sing. I know you have to go. I know you who have to go. Taught you all that I can. <laughs> Taught you all I can. She said, "When'd you get so old?" She said, "When'd you get so old?" But you'll always be my young man. But you'll always be my young man. Not bad. Not terrible. Okay. You want to call Luke Combs now? <laughs> no. Zach Justice, the country singer. Coming around the turnpike. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to do. Except for? Pickleball. Jared. Oh. Um, no, I do love pickleball. Recently, I've been asking a, we'll call her a woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What the fuck does that mean? But go on. <laughs> to play pickleball with me. But I think she thinks I'm flirting. When J oh, or like you're not. I genuinely just want to play pickleball i thought this was going the other way around where she thinks that you legitimately only want to play pickleball but i'm trying to flirt but you're trying to flirt no oh no i genuinely just want to s smack some whiffles around are you doing anything else that may lead her to believe S that S uh, picture of my penis <laughs> So as a goof, as a yeah, as a goof, because everybody gets loser has to suck. This is what I say. How do you? How know? do you think she's getting the wrong message? How do you know that she? I'm good at picking up the vibes. Oh, I was talking about this with Sterling in the car. You know when you're like talking to someone, and you can tell that the vibe has switched in their head. Yes, and and you don't know what's happened, but you know they're not into you anymore. And like, you're still trying to have similar conversations or on the same wavelength that you guys used to be, but now it just feels so different. It's almost like, it's almost like you're making them do chores by talking to you. Yeah. Yeah. That, that sucks. Is, <laughs> that is one of the most like heartbreaking feelings. And then you try to tuck yourself out of this. Oh, maybe they're just having a day. Oh, we, we had something similar. I was talking to you guys about a girl and you guys were like, oh, she's probably just, you know, she's probably busy and has a lot on her mind. I was like. Yeah, she may have a lot of her in mind, but one of those things is not me. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. How about you get the pasta? Um, I think I have ADHD, but I'm not sure because <laughs> I've never been diagnosed. Also, Alyssa, stay over there. But I thought that was Wait, you were talking to us about this recently? No, not recently. Oh, Sick this as was... hell though, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, for our audio listeners, I just did a backflip. Oh, this was this girl was... from a while ago. A while ago, correct. To be fair, please be. In that situation, I personally I have two girls in my head. I have no idea. Watch your mouth. <laughs> 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 oh 
Watch your mouth. <laughs> Remember all eight of them watch this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, in that specific scenario that I think you're talking about, I was lying to you to make you feel better. And I okay. hate that about you. Well, because I thought that that's what you needed in nope. that moment. And I because the, the whole time you were saying you were saying to me, "Oh no, oh yeah, she really." And the whole time I was like, "No, like I'm good at this in, instinctual stuff. I know she's not into me." No, and we were 100% on this. Well, <laughs> I'll say like 90% on the same page because I believed everything that you were saying and all the intuition that you had. Yeah, that's why I was getting so frustrated with you because I was like, there's yeah. no way that you don't think this is this is just logical. But the, she's over here piping me down a fantasy. I thought it was, you know, real. But okay, but the the ten percent of me that was like also piping you down that fantasy was that's right, weird literally you say your words. It's weird when you say it. Okay. You've got that's what it is. What? You've got a sexual harassing tone. I have a sexually I could say anything to be really gentle. I want to turn your guts inside out like a war victim. I'm gonna say it the same exact You're way. Say it the same way. <laughs> I want to turn your guts out like a war victim. <laughs> <laughs> Did not say it the same. You felt that's... threatened when he said it, right? But when I said it, turned on. And that's the difference. Go ahead. Okay. I thought that 10% of me thought that, well, you you really like this girl and you care a lot about her. and Or boy. And, okay. And you. It's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and you really thought it was going to go somewhere. And I, I, I really enjoyed seeing you so excited about something. So and you so decided to lie to me. I, but I wanted you to keep that feeling alive because I didn't want to. You didn't want the light to leave my eyes. Yes. Well, the light was already leaving my eyes. I know, but <laughs> I was trying to save it. I was trying to like Why? keep lighting that lantern, you Why? know, because you were so happy and so excited. And I Why just, would that not put me in a darker place to know that the person who he thinks is the closest to me <laughs> that's hurtful okay would you but truthful because that's what i do i tell the truth wouldn't that now i can't trust that person so doesn't that hurt me more in the long run because you knew it was inevitable that me and woman would not work out then it's like it doesn't work out and i have a lying acquaintance okay i wasn't <sighs> Lying is a strong word. It lying was, is a word that is I black was, and white. I was sh like sugarcoating it because I. You I, know what lying is? What? Segregated. Because it's a black it's and black white. It's black and it's white. MLK, you're either lying or you're not. You're lying or you're not. But I feel like there's levels to lying that are in the gray area, like sugarcoating. Liar. <laughs> <laughs> you're a liar. What else have you lied to me about? My sex wasn't good, was it? <laughs> I mean, I did. I, you were just so like excited that we finally did it, and I, I didn't want. Now you're lying. We never did it. When are you gonna stop? The <laughs> fuck. A lot of people on this podcast. Oh, you bully Jared. Yeah, because he deserved it. You know, I was. I you're was a liar, and you're a woman thief. I was coming to your defense in the in the comments on the last video about all the the spit takes. People like were starting to comment. They're like, at what point does this become bullying? And I started responding. Immediately. And I said, at the same point, it stops being my kink, right? Just to like reply with some humor. But in today's society, like one of my biggest peeves is um, when people like get offended on behalf of somebody else and they start speaking for them. And because like, Somebody is very sweet. They're looking out for me, you know, but they were, they were just like the last episode made me upset because I don't like it when Zach treats you like that. But I, I, was, lo I love it. What do I do then? Well, but the thing is, is like, I, I thought the bit was hilarious and I explained to them, I was like, if it's in the podcast, it's a hundred percent what we want to show you and a hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, a lot of people don't know this before the podcast, we write down word for word, everything that we're going to say. Oh yeah. This is all scripted. Yeah. 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 He, and then part. you came up with a spitting video. You're like, spit on me five times. Yeah. You're like, spit on me again. You know what I mean? And I was like, I don't know if I want it. Spit on you once. And you're like, spit on me like five times. Five times. Yeah. I was like, again. Yeah, or. Yeah. And then you're like, you're like, bite your gums. So a little bit of blood comes out. And I yeah. thought that was weird. But I did it because you're my acquaintance. You're my acquaintance. You are. That's crazy. And that means a lot to you. Look up the definition of acquaintance. Please do. And let's see how far away that is from friend. 
Give me a reverse bony. But yeah, I mean, it was just like, I, I thought the bit was hilarious and I didn't, I didn't like people, you know, I, I appreciate the genuine concern, but I, I don't like people speaking on behalf of other people and like putting words. Do you feel like, because you've, you feel like maybe people have coddled you because people think you can't stand up for yourself? Probably. By them defending you, they're being worse than I am. No. Oh, That's, how it flips little comment section, huh? No, 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 no. Flip you over like, like a minute math test, baby. But like even one of our friends, uh, you asked them, I mean, this is such a toxic question. You said, what do you hate most about Jared? And they said, I love that question. They said, I hate that he doesn't stand up for himself more. And the thing is, is like, I think the reason I don't stand up for myself more is because I think people underestimate how much I can actually take. Cause like we joke that sounds like an abused housewife. <laughs> <laughs> you have been manipulated so much that like now you're begging for it because that's your only normal. Not only you haven't been bullied, you've been enslaved by the male patriarchy. I'm so, I'm starting to need to rethink some things. Uh, um, acquaintance. An acquaintance is a person who knows slightly, but who is not a close friend. Yep. Yep. That's what you think of me. It's not about what I think. It's just is what it is. You're my acquaintance. What am I to you? Friend. <laughs> a brother. Mm, my brother wouldn't breathe like you. <laughs> no, I think I have might have sleep apnea too. No, what? Ah, I'm trying to relate. Make you feel better. Well, now you just lied to me. Yeah, and how to make you feel bad? No, what do we learn? Lying. We don't lie to our acquaintances, no, we don't, don't we? No, we don't. I'm sorry. We're acquainted buddies. Do you want to look at AI baby photos? Oh, yay! Please. I forgot we we're gonna do this. Whoa, what the hell is that thing? <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, she can't pull up a picture of my AI child, and you go, "Uh, <laughs> what the hell is that thing?" Well, it's the personification of a squirrel. <laughs> oh. I should oh, do this. my kid's going to be I so bullied. I should show you the photo and you have to guess. Who's the father? Yeah. Oh, they're going to say, which, like, whose kid is this? I was like, that's not mine. <laughs> that's Alyssa and Jared's kid. Yeah, the curly hair kind of gives it away. Oh, you're flipping through these so fast. Sorry. It's our kid. What? what? Me and you? Mm -hmm. Really? You cheated on me. That's <laughs> Zach right there. That Zach, you cannot deny that kid. Wait, are these all Zach? Yeah, they, there's oh, a lot of them. <laughs> she did Who'd a you lot. cheat on me with? George no Lopez? No, who? But how would she? It has so many of your features. Those are my eyes for sure. They are. I had really big brown eyes when I was little. Those are my eyebrows. That's my overall demeanor. <laughs> that kid doesn't look like me. That kid doesn't look like you. That's not our kid. Whose kid I is this? Pretty cute. Oh, he's cute. He's definitely cute. Like you know. But yeah, that doesn't look like either of you. No, or the that parents. doesn't look like our kid. God damn it. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it, dude! No, I, I am. My precious. I am never. That was a cute one. That I'm was cute. One. Never having children. Wait, these are this. That's cute. That's a cute. Yeah, that one's cute. Oh my god, that first one was just ooh, jump they scare. Do have six toes, but that's fine. Yeah, that checks out. Oh my god, AI like generated photos is just that it's not helping my self-confidence whatsoever go no, that's back, a cute kid go back to the the first one the like <laughs> oh all um, right it's not as bad that's not as bad yeah that's just, a cute kid it was just like the jump from the one before that he has to grow into his big old head. forehead yeah uh, trust me he won't grow into it it just gets bigger i know from experience yeah. forehead reduction surgery attempt dude the fucking I got like I did the consultation, eighty five hundred dollars at for, least at, for at, at this place for the deviated septum surgery, which like in the grand the geez, in the grand scheme of surgery costs is not that expensive, but it's a hundred per at this location specifically it was a hundred percent out of pocket. Oh, these look more like Jared. <laughs> what the hell? Look, that's me what? holding Ew. my kid. Why do you? What the hell is going on with the hands? I don't know, um, Whoa. but that's, that's look at, that's me with my future kids. I hate your fingers. Well, okay. AI can't do fingers properly. What the hell? I look, whose kid is that? I look weird as a father. I just, you know what? It's just not in my cards. Whose kid is that? <laughs> I don't know, but he cross-eyed as hell.
Wow, it even got your bracelet. Oh, dang. That doesn't look like you. That looks like you mixed with Mike Sheffer. I think the curly hair was really throwing AI for a loop. Can you pull up uh, the video link that I emailed you? Email link? Look at this. Look at this because it's going to start playing. This is one of the wildest things I just, I've, I've seen. This is recently in South Africa. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Holy shit. The fucking street just explodes out of nowhere. There should be a law out there that the street can't do that. The thing is, at, like up until this point, at least what I've read, is that they have no idea what caused this. Oh, good. <laughs> right? Is that not just terrifying? You're just at the council meeting. Hey, so I was on the street when it blew up. Just <laughs> seen what happened. Ooh. We couldn't tell you. Hey, your guess is as good as ours. What but do you like, think? Imagine being this guy. I don't know what he's doing on the sidewalk, but just like a fucking van comes flying your way. I wish there was sound to this video because like I'm so curious to hear like what that would have sounded like. Or what if, okay, hear me out. What if this is a courageous thing? They lured in all the local pedophiles in the white vans and then tried to take them all out at once. Oh, interesting. There are a lot of white vans. I'm there. just, I'm saying somebody was thinking. I, you're, yeah, I like where your head's at. Thank you. I, I feel like the execution could have been um, better because it seems like for the most part, the vans are fairly intact um afterwards i mean there might have been some cases of whiplash surprisingly only one fatality was recorded from this from oh, the that's sad no it's 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 extremely sad but just like seeing how like extreme it this like street explosion is i'm surprised it was it, like in the fact that it's launching like what was it just on, a gas burst you think probably like just pipes running underneath because you can see how like it literally it, it cuts in a straight line down the road so i'm just, i'm assuming that it's just like a, a pipe burst or whatever but i think what i read was like i think that was their first thought too but they said the gas pipes that run under there uh or at least under most streets um in johannesburg they run at low pressure and in that area, they were all fairly intact. So should we close out the show with some dropouts advice questions? I have fun with these. I like hearing from the audience. And I feel like it, it, it it's hard. I feel like sometimes we're talking at the audience. And I kind of like the back and forth. Oh, I have them all on. Uh, we're kind of like in a group call. It's like it goes through my headphones so I can hear them all at the same time. Oh, right now? Yeah. Oh. What did you say? How would you... Hold on. One of them was talking. Oh, oh sorry. But, sorry. Didn't want Thousands to of them were talking. Okay. Oh. Is this what God feels like when he gets prayers? Probably. Um, no wonder he doesn't answer them. No, no, no. It's yeah. hard to focus. You just got canceled. All right. All right. Dropouts advice. What do you say? I just wrote all these down, but what do you say to a man that's been drained of his self-confidence and self-worth? Oh. Starting out. Um, that. I'd say buy the thing before they start doing background checks. Come on, man. This guy's reaching out um, for help. Yeah, but he appreciates humor if he's watching the show. Uh, yeah, that's true. I think it's getting to a habit and routine of a positive mindset. Um, you've got to find your passion. And if you don't, you've got you've to hold yourself to a higher standard, you know, whether that's waking up early, whether that's, you know, making your, your bed in the morning, it's just kind of accomplishing smaller tasks to feel like you're the type of person you want to be. You just start acting like the type of person you want to be. And I think eventually you get there. Um, I would say find people that you really admire and study, study their lives. Cause you'll see that they also usually went through something that's kind of tumultuous and um, you can find you know, you can find comfort in knowing that they got out of it and these dark times don't last forever, but they were a teaching moment to make the best parts of their lives either more worthwhile or ability to capitalize on their lessons that they learned in kind of these dark times. So I would say just don't give up on yourself as hard as that is. And it's, it's all about building momentum no matter how small that momentum is. It's like, all right, I got to do one thing positive today for myself 
And, you know what, let's do another one. Um, somebody said, if you can start putting one good day, you start off with one good day, and then th- the next day you try to have another good day, and you string enough of those together, you got a good life. So oh, That's know, beautiful. Yeah. Just keep focusing, you know, just don't be too hard on yourself. I also think it's a really hard skill to learn um, and actually like put into practice, but psychologically fake confidence, um, you know, feigns real confidence. Uh, Cause eventually if you tell yourself uh, something enough, you'll start to believe it. And that goes both ways for positive and negative thoughts. Um, but if you start, transitioning those negative thoughts into positive ones, your brain will start to believe it. And that self-confidence will start to come back. Are you asleep? Okay. So the next one is interesting. The subject line is my brother gave me chlamydia. (laughs) Retweet. So (laughs) I'm sorry. What? (laughs) It comes with a super long explanation. I sure hope so. Or (laughs) or there's a long story. Long story short. Drag it out. I need to, okay. yeah. There needs to be no doubt in my mind that she did not have sex with her brother. Okay, so hi there. Hello. So a little backstory <laughs> on my situation. I'm 20 years old and in college right now. I was raised by my mom because my dad left when I was super young and haven't seen him since. I had been dating this guy I met. Happens. Happens to the best of us. <laughs> and the worst. I've been dating this guy at school for almost a year now, and things have been pretty rocky lately. We got into a terrible fight one weekend, and he broke up with me. I decided to go out and try to distract myself by going to a party with some friends. You hussy. Oh, Zach. I said it. You can't put her down. You hussy. This this was a low moment in her life. Okay. So you're going out to give your comments back. I apologize. Keep going. This guy started talking to me at the party, and one thing led to another, and we ended up hooking up. You hussy! Sack! I was on the right train! My boyfriend slash ex-boyfriend, this, uh, in parentheses, I don't know what we were at that point, called me the next week wanting to talk, and we worked some things out, and everything was fine. The guilt of hooking up with that guy kept eating me up, so I went to my mom for some well, advice. Sorry for calling you a hussy. <laughs> yeah, she's a good person, Okay. <laughs> okay. When we were talking, my mom asked to see a picture of the guy from the party, and when I showed her, her face dropped, and she started to freak out. I kept asking her what was wrong, and finally she managed to calm down, and she told me that that was my father's son from his new marriage after my mom. Oh, Oh. fuck. Happens. No, it doesn't. It doesn't (laughs) happen. It just doesn't, okay? (laughs) I don't care what anyone says. It doesn't happen. A week or two later, I started having some symptoms that weren't normal and went and got tested and came back positive for chlamydia. Holy shit. And so did my boyfriend. My boyfriend swears up and down that he didn't sleep with anyone other than me in that time, so it had to be from my half-brother. And so now I have to confess to my boyfriend everything that happened. What should I do? No, you don't. (laughs) No, baby girl, you don't. You're gonna be lying through your teeth for the rest of your life. That that has to stay with you. Can't you get chlamydia grave. from like a chicken or something? Where koalas? Koalas. Tell them. Yeah. Say you went to a petting zoo and and jerked uh, off a koala. That's way easier to explain than having sex with your brother. Oh. What? That's one objectively hilarious. <laughs> Two. You my kind of hussy. That's, you my kind of. That's my kind of hussy right there. Damn, you, just living on the right, edge. You're a hussy that hustles. That's insane. Do not tell your boyfriend. What are you thinking? But where does she say that she got chlamydia from? For all he knows, she thinks that he gave her chlamydia. So now he's like trying to be like, huh? I don't, I didn't. Huh? Oh, so now it's on him. No, so don't gaslight it. Just be like, wait, what? What happened? Like, neither of us did anything. Oh, so you're saying just don't even mention. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes you got to brush it under the rug and just keep on walking. (laughs) But with that, Thanksgiving's going to be odd. (laughs) You know, you both reaching for that gravy. Realize you got that coochie gravy now. (laughs) Goodness. Um, Happens. No, it doesn't. Just did, baby. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, handsome. 
I that's I I think that's the first time I feel like I've been left speechless on this podcast. Um, Do not tell your boyfriend. But does she? Does she? I am all for honesty and communication, <laughs> baby girl. You die with this one. But what? It, what? It, should she? Oh, fuck. Should she what? Should she just say like that she slept with somebody else? Nope. Uh, no. Keep that. I just don't think we need to bring it up. <laughs> just. I think we bury this one. Know that we, you know, you guys were not together. Um, morally, you know, it depends on the person. Some people are be like, you know, respectfully. Some people wait, but technically, you weren't with anybody. You didn't do anything wrong. Okay. You got chlamydia from your brother, and that <laughs> can't get out. Chlamydia is the one that's like easy to get rid of, right? Like you take is that medicine the, and then it's gone. What's the one where you like hit your penis with a mallet and then all the juice comes out? Oh my God, that almost- Is made, that chlamydia or That no? almost made me throw up just- But do thinking. you know what I'm talking about? I've heard the that, clap? yeah. Is or, that- I don't yeah, know what it is. Wait, is that what that is? Let's get to a clip. <laughs> Could you imagine? Chlamydia can be treated um, <laughs> easily. Good. Easily? Okay. With antibiotics. And it can be transferred through oral as well. So, so you could have- Gone rogue with a Starbucks drink. Uh -huh. I accidentally picked up the wrong one. Bing, bong, boom. You got clit. Midia. <laughs> you got clit. Midia. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm with Zach on this one. Take that to your grave. We all do things in our life that we regret. And some of them don't need to see the light of the day. Mm -hmm. This is one of them. Bold move even sending that in, in <sighs> on this podcast. Yeah. Objectively hilarious. You're a hilarious hussy. <laughs> and I love that. Look at him stretch. Who does he think he is? I'm going to be completely I, I I don't know what else to say. Uh, Except I, for July 27th, yeah. please come to the live show. This is the last time you're going to hear about it. New York City, if you don't get your tickets, you're going to miss out on probably the best day of your life. We've got some uh, very interesting things planned that you do not want to miss. It's, it's a little insane. We got the Patreon. Uh, go over there. Be a part of it. Uh, you get a bonus episode, the you after school special, we 20 keep minutes, the cameras rolling, 20 minutes extra. We it's do like a, a drunk episode. episode every month, which we're about to film tomorrow. We got to get some alcohol. And if you stay till the end, um, just DM me the word hussy. I'll know what it means. <laughs> and comment. Um, handsome is the sweetest boy to have ever lived. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dot com. Dot com. All right, um, send send us out. Jesus Christ, that one that fucked me up. He's so sweet. He's so tired.